Hello, everybody, and welcome to the false virtual and augmented reality talk with Tim Jacob Bornecrant. Uh, Jacob works for Collabora with graphics and virtual reality, XR lead at Collabora, and a member of the Open XR working group. He has worked with Linux graphics since 2006 starting with tungsten graphics and moving into VMware. In 2013, he, along with a friend, started the OpenHMV project. Then in the spring of 2019, was involved in launching both Modado and OpenXR at GDC. Please welcome him. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, as I said, um, as he said, I'm Jacob Bonacrantz. Um, today, uh, I'm this is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to give a short introduction to what AR and VR is, talk a little bit about uh, OpenXR, and then the Monado project, uh, going in a little bit in, onto technical details there uh, for those that are interested, uh, and some more status on Monado and a little bit on OpenXR as well, and then wrap the whole thing up. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> reintroducing myself here uh, first. Uh, Jacob Bonnerkrantz, these are my contact links. I will upload the FD PDF somewhere uh, so you can get all of them linked so you don't have to type them down or something like that. Um, and please, after the talk, uh, feel very feel very free to talk to me about all this stuff or just other stuff in general, like XR, VR, or in general. Um, uh, open source in general, and also especially about joining Collabora. Uh, we are always looking for people to join, uh, even in these times. So starting off, uh, what is AR and VR? Um, what is augmented reality? Um, so you know, a simple definition definition of the word aug uh, augment is means uh, make things greater or add to it. Uh, so that's what AR is. Um, and this is like a use case or a example of AR um, where uh, the hardware is Daiquiri. Um, they had, unfortunately, they have gone under, but they had a very cool product where you would put on these headsets um, and a operator somewhere else in the world could call into the headset and you would see, like he's seeing in this picture, uh, the the face of the operator. Uh, talking to him, um, they could all the operator could see what he was seeing, um, and they could also get some could also draw onto reality. So if you see uh, this little red circle here, that is actually drawn by this guy in his in this guy's view. So he's actually seeing it. So uh, one of the use cases there that they could have like you have this very complex machinery, and there's like two guys in the world that could repair it, uh, but you know you can call this guy and the guy that actually is on the scene could put on these headsets and the guy could say, screw this bolt, like this bolt, and do not screw this bolt because then the whole thing would blow up uh, or something like that. Or like more you know, sensible, pull this hard disk, don't pull this hard disk because then the server goes down or something like that. Um, so that's, that's an actual uh, work use case, I would say, for AR. Um, but what we are more <laughs> known, uh, you know, this since this is a gaming uh, focused conference, uh, we're more more into games, uh, and uh, I think the most widespread, uh, uh, let's see, commonly thought AR game out there is Pokemon Go, uh, which is uh, a lot of people say you know that's not really AR, but it's the you know most common AR game that like everybody has actually used, uh, even though it's very limited in, in its ARness uh, of the world. That's still in, in classified as AR. Um, and what is virtual reality? Uh, I really like this quote. Uh, I had actually had to look it up. I was I thought, thought, first thought it was something that Adam Savage says, but it's actually from a movie called Dungeon Master. <laughs> Um, and that's Adam Sandwich's very famous quote, I react reality and supposition is my own. Uh, and that's basically what virtual reality is. So you uh, completely replace the reality around you with something else. And, and again, the most common use case here uh, that most people have run into is games. Uh, this is Job Simulator. 
Um, but if you're looking at the absolute strict definition of AR or sorry VR, um, this is also VR. Uh, even though it's not as immersive, it's still completely replacing the reality with something else, or you know, a generated reality. So even Doom back in ninety, whatever ish, uh, was actually VR, uh, even though uh, that's not how it's you know VR is used anymore. Um, so uh, that was quick about what AR and VR is. Um, so. I'm going to talk about a little bit about OpenXR. Uh, so how do we do VR or AR or XR, as they're both commonly known together? Um, you have your program, you have a sort of a software platform that sits in between, and you, then you have your hardware that um, you, know, you that platform talk to. So you have your drivers, you have all that stuff. Uh, and the example of platforms are Oculus Quest or Steam VR. And you know, between the program and the platform, there's an API. Uh, uh, and in the past, there was a lot of different APIs, and all if you wanted to write your game or your or even run WebEx or, or something like that, you know, the browsers or the games or the applications had to support all of these uh, APIs. If they all of these different APIs, if they wanted to support lots of hardware. Uh, which just resulted in people that are supporting us one or two, uh, and a lot of you know platforms didn't get as widespread usage support as they could have. Uh, so uh, the solution to this is uh, creating a new API, uh, not like <laughs> uh, the XD comic, um, uh, where you know we have OpenXR, where there's one unified application interface that all of these platforms. Um, provide and you can write portable applications uh, that can now support multiple hardware. Uh, and participation in this uh, OpenXR, uh, there's a lot of companies. Uh, so there's actually a, all of the important planes are there. Uh, yeah, it's like even, you know, Blender, uh, Blender and uh, uh, where are we? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so what is cool about uh, OpenXR? Um, it's just like OpenGL and Vulkan. Uh, it's made by Kronos. Uh, it is out now. You can actually use it. Um, uh, it's action-based, and that's a different interpretation of how to do inputs. And I will go a little bit into that. Uh, and there are fossil implementations. <laughs> uh, which I will talk about a little bit later. Um, but yeah, the, the key important bits here is that anybody can implement it. Uh, and it, just like OpenGL and Vulkan, it allows applications to be portable. So what does uh, action-based mean in this um, for the API? Uh, so a lot of, in the past, I would, you know, uh, look on a controller like the is the user pressing the a button or is the user pressing the b button or you know pressing forward or moving forward or you know angling the joystick in certain ways and those inputs will be in very tied to the type of controller because of that um so instead of and that makes it hard to add new type of uh, controllers or you know um which resulted in in the past that ev basically every controller now looks like the Xbox controller because that's the controller that most games were written for. Um, but instead, if you um, think of inputs as uh, actions, so you would, um, an application would create an action saying teleport or fire a gun. Uh, and then just say, maybe you can use the A button for this, or maybe you can use the B button for this. And this is up to you. Um, you have a lot more greater flexibility in remapping inputs and also a lot greater flexibility uh, of contextually changing the mappings. Uh, so say if you have a disability uh, where you can't really, where depending on what you're doing in the application, you might not want to press the A button in the same way. Um, and with actions, the application will say now, 
I'm doing these actions, like I'm firing, you know, holding a gun. Uh, but if you know, change your weapons to say a sword, they can now the game can now say I'm now holding a sword, and you can then remap the actions to different inputs uh, for allow for uh, a lot a lot better both for new hardware, no hardware, and for uh, allowing more accessibility options. So, and I think that's a really good thing. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, going to talk about Monado and Deep Dive there. And this is the FOSS implementation part of uh, OpenXR that I had on the slide before. So I got, so going back again, so how do we do XR? Um, we, you have your program, you have a platform and you have your hardware. Uh, and Monado is a platform. Um, it, yeah, so it, it's a collection of drivers and uh, software that allows you to run an a XR application, basically every your application on your computer or on a, spe a specific hardware. So diving in a little bit in uh, into Monado, uh, splitting up all of the components into fairly um, broad terms, as you might say. Uh, you have the OpenXR state tracker that sits on top and that takes care of the all of the state and all of the application interactions with the hardware and abstracts away and simplifies them and also do, do all of the error checking and all that stuff that's needed uh, on behalf of uh, yeah on behalf of the drivers uh, and then it calls down into Monado itself the hardware drivers uh, the the compositor and and the platform code um, but yeah that that picture that I showed before is simplified as i said uh, and even this picture is kind of simplified but you can see that the drivers need to talk to the platform code that you know that acts the way the operating system there are various levels of compositors so we need to be able to support both opengl and vulcan graf graphics api and the compositor is basically graphics uh, graphics api uh, dependent so those interfaces are different there um, yeah, and the compositor just needs to talk to the drivers in order to know how to do the hardware distortion on the HMDs. Um, there's a whole bunch of auxiliary code here on the side that the drivers and all of the other parts talk to uh, and stuff like that. So, um, analyzing it a little bit more and a little bit different site, you can see that there. The, these are the interfaces, and that there are certain interfaces in the stack. So you have your OpenXR here, you have the Prober, which we kind of a misname, but it's called that, and that, you, that mostly probes for devices um, that talks to the various platform codes. You have your XRT device, which is a device um, that the drivers implement. You have the XRT uh, compositor, which I implement the compositors and talk to both hardware via Vulkan and OpenGL, uh, and also you know the underlying system. So it you know, talks to X or VLAN in order to get access to the display um, display system. There's also adding more complexity to this. Um, there's also an IPC layer that we insert between the whole of this, so you can run multiple applications. Uh, so you run the compositor in one process and then connect uh, to it via the IPC layer. And the IPC layer just in, uh, implements the same interfaces as uh, the, the system underneath. So it's sort of like invisible to the open XR state tracker that sits on top of it. So it's just a sort of a layer, basically. And what was all of this XRT I kept talking about? Um, in Monado, we have the XRT interface or the Monado interfaces. Um, so those are the, you know all of these XRT device, XRT uh, things that sits between the different components. Um, it's purely C, 
uh, is not stable. And this is, if you've ever seen a talk about Mesa talking about the Gallium interfaces, this is basically the same thing, but for XR. Uh, its design is heavily drawn from um, Gallium. And uh, as I <laughs> came from Tungsten Graphics, uh, I was slight, you know, on had a little bit of a hand in the Gallium interfaces as well. So yeah, um, I drew, we drew a lot of in, uh, inspiration from that. And I just in general mindset about it. And again, it's not stable by design because our understanding of hardware will change as we go along. Like uh, I never claim to know everything about XR hardware uh, in the past, and I'm not claiming that now. And we, you know, we cannot still we cannot predict the future. So we need to be able to change the interfaces um, uh, as we go along. But for, but luckily we have the OpenXR interface that sits on top that is stable, and so application doesn't you know have to rewrite every five months or so. Um, So um, deep diving a little bit more into all of these various interfaces, just to give some more meat on the bone. Um, we have the XRT device, which is basically the most central thing because this is the thing that's the XR hardware. Uh, you have HMDs, you have controllers. Uh, it uses some more aspe uh, aspect patterns instead of regular um, uh, inheritance model like you would expect from Java. So you can sort of uh, an uh, HMD or like a device can be an HMD and also have inputs. It could have hand trackings and be an HMD and it doesn't have to have an HMD. So there's no, they, ju they just have different aspects that they can uh, implement. Uh, there's various functions which allow you to synchronize the input, get the input uh, set output so if you can vibrate your controller, you can retrieve retrieve the positional tracking. Uh, and we also just recently added hand tracking, so you can get that from the um, device. Um, and you also have like a fixed set of um, information about the hardware, so you can get the screen position, this distortion, what origin it is in the tracking system, uh, or the yeah, the, you can have various tracking system uh, all combined. So the, this is also set an information that's there. There we have the compositors. Not to be, hmm, if you're coming from like an X and uh, Wayland uh, world, it, there's a lot of things called compositors nowadays, um, but it really only, <laughs> it does the same thing, but it's not also, also mm, yeah, not designed to be uh, user implementable in a way. Uh, it's more of a, I have all of the, I have this hardware and this hardware looks differently and having to add support for all of these various weird hardware and uh, is really hard. So we actually need to push some of the compositing uh, into the hardware. Um, and you have a base class and then the various uh, classes for um, the different types of APIs and uh, FD. So you have GL, you have Vulkan, and you also have FD, which is the... Uh, basically DMA buff or how to just raw buffer uh, going over. Yeah. Um, and as we said, the FD compositor is the real compositor. There's also swap chains, which correlates basically one-to-one -to, -one to the swap chains that is in the OpenXR API. Uh, it has more functions. It's more explicit again, because the OpenXR state tracker that sits above this, take care of any implicit states and turn them into explicit states or call function calls, which makes it easier to call um, implement the compositor. And we push all the complexity up into the state uh, the state tracker that sits between all of these, you know, the, the, the important code and the application. Uh, 
then we have the prober. Um, and it's the thing that actually is sort of a become where we dump all of the functionality that's not really fits into all of, uh, any of the other buckets. So it holds the policy, um, it device uh, probes all the devices that are on the system. Uh, I also abstract away some of the uh, OS things on how to talk to uh, hardware. Um, we probably should split it into two parts. Um, we've been thinking about that for a while. So um, I sort of a status on Monado and a little bit on OpenXR. Recent developments. Um, we are passing the OpenXR conformance test suit. We are not conformant because that requires us to, um, you know, pay the conformance fee. Uh, but luckily, the OpenXR uh, conformance test suit is open source and readily available. Um, we have packages in Debian for Monado, and unfortunately, Monado is in heavy development. So, like even after a week. <laughs> It's kind of out of date. Uh, we do build uh, Debian packages on the CI, so you can point directly at the CI and download the packages there. Uh, we have six of tracking with the libservive project. Um, we have an initial port to Android of Monado, uh, so you can run uh, Monado on uh, on Android, which is cool. We can do multiple clients. Um, we have also added more drivers as we have gone along. Yeah, sorry about all of them. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is the current list of hardware that we support. We support Android hardware, uh, which is basically just the IMU in the uh, in the in your phone and the distortion parameters from cardboard. Uh, we have a Andrino driver, which is sort of a, there as a example of how to uh, create your own hardware uh, with, we, with uh, Andrino. Uh, there's also support for the Daedric controller. We have support for the OSVR HDK, Vi, Vipro Index. And as I said, we are positional tracking through Lip Survive. Uh, we support the Northstar. Uh, headset, which is a really cool AR headset that's completely made by the community. So it's all open source, um, very good fit. We have support for the PlayStation VR and the PlayStation Move. We have six stuff tracking there. It's a little bit hot, tricky to set up, but and you can actually get six stuff tracking with all of these. We have support for the really old Razer Hydra. And we do have a wrapper around OpenHMDs. We have support for those drivers as well. That's on there in there. There are also some other uh, drivers. We have a dummy driver that you know allows you to just test it, even without uh, allows you to test uh, Monado without any hardware at all. We have a simulator driver as well, uh, which allows you to connect into it and manually manipulate values to um, just simulate a order. Um, and drum and dry is supposed to be as simple as possible, uh, so which is why we have a similar driver there as well, because it's slightly more complex. Uh, so the, you can look at the drum and driver of how to do a driver or how to just start doing a driver where the similar driver, simulated driver would sort of get in the way of that or all this crazy stuff that it does. Uh, some codes uh, status. You can see uh, Monado, uh, the, the code that we have written for Monado is around six, uh, 65,000 lines of code. Uh, there's 14k lines in the drivers. Uh, you can see that's fairly small to the rest of the stuff in that's in Monado. Uh, you you know they have the state trackers, which both is OpenXR state tracker and the prober. The there's some debug UI as well in there. Uh, the compositor. Uh, there's a whole bunch of auxiliary code that uh, that that's there to make it easy to write drivers. We have the IPC layers, and if you're wondering why these are um, 
uh, strike strike through uh, numbers before them. Those are uh, I sort of I have kept this code page along from my various talks, and I keep keep updating them. So I think the first number is uh, somewhere yeah last year, uh, and I think the second number is in February this year. Uh, so and the RPC layer is new, so it doesn't have <laughs> more numbers. You can see that the Vi driver has grown a fair bit. Uh, and that's because we have added support for the index controllers, the index. Uh, we have hand tracking by the index controllers there as well. So that's all of the, that code that's there. And um, now a little bit about OpenXR. So apps and engines are starting to support OpenXR, which is good. Um, the Godot has a OpenXR plugin that was made by Christoph Hag. Um, uh, a colleague of mine in Collabora. Uh, Lover, I had a support for this and it's upstreamed. So that's a Lua game engine development system. Um, and there's support in Unreal and Unity has said that they will support them as well. Uh, so support is getting there uh, soon. So uh, next up for Monado. We want to improve the PS move tracking a little bit more. Uh, there's things that we can improve there. Um, we also want to make a native lighthouse tracking inside of Monado. Um, and sort of get take the pieces that we need, and so we don't have to. It, yeah, so we can get a much better support in there. Uh, we want excellent North Star support. So we want to make North Star be really well supported in Monado. So. Uh, just because it's an open source project, and uh, you know we want to support open source uh, brethren. Um, finish the Android port and also finish the Windows port, which might not be so interesting for you, but um, it will allow people to uh, use Monaro everywhere, basically. Uh, even further out, we are thinking on like system UI, setup UI, AR and SLAM. Um, those are things like. You know, basically, if you haven't used Steam, uh, the Steam VR interfaces we we need for Monado as well. Um, we will probably just make a very simple one for ourselves uh, for Monado, and instead provide uh, lab libraries to do the thing. So GNOME and KDE can make their own system UIs for Monado, and so you can have you can match the theme of the system UI with your desktop. Um, to wrap up a little bit here. Um, yeah, uh, we are hoping to build a FOSSXR, a open source community around Mon Monado, but not just Monado, even like Northstar and all those things. Um, you are definitely welcome to join the various channels of uh, where you can reach us uh, for Monado as well. Uh, we want to make give. We want to make sure that open source is part of the coming AR revolution. Uh, you know, at any moment now, um, and that is why Collabora has spent a lot of time and effort into making sure that Monado is there, and that there are open source alternatives to uh, all of these through AR technologies. So the you know, we don't end up in a wall garden again like iOS and Android. And a whole bunch of links for people to follow. Uh, yeah, you don't need to type this down. I will make sure that the PDF is available to download. So uh, that's it for me. Uh, Again, feel free to talk to me about these things. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. OK. Let's go to the first questions. Are there any flaws VR AR games using Monado or OpenXR yet? 
Uh, yes. Let's see. <laughs> There's a port of the Morrowind en engine. I have to... Let's see. Uh, the Dark Mod VR and Open Morrowind are two that has been ported to OpenXR and can be run on uh, Monado. So... And there's support in the Godot engine, so if you if, if want, as people make their VR games with that engine, they will be able to support uh, OpenXR and Monado with that. Great. Um, what is the minimal hardware to try OpenXR on apps? Sorry, what's the? Uh, what is the minimal hardware to try OpenXR and apps? Um, so <laughs> you can run Monado without any hardware at all. We have the you know the simulator and the dummy driver, uh, but you can't really do much then. Um, uh, yeah, there's yeah I'm. <laughs> The, it, it, that's a hard question. What what the minimal is? Uh, I think right now the best supported to get give you a best uh, or a useful system would be a Vive or Index, which is not very minimal, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Okay. Um... What is the relationship with OpenXR and WebXR layer? Um, so WebXR is um, sort of a different a um, a different standard, and they were sort of made at the same time, but at different sites. Uh, WebXR runs on top of OpenXR, so Chrome implements its WebXR layer with OpenXR. Um, yeah. So in the simplest turn, WebXR runs on top of OpenXR. Uh, um, so, yeah. Can you list classes of accessories that could be part to OpenXR? Sure. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, in a sense, Mm -hmm. As we expand the OpenXR API, and this is talking very high level, you know, we would track more and more of the human body and more and more of the world. So any accessory that allows you to track, say, your hand, your your face, or you know, anything like anything that can um, track and generate uh, input. So like in the future, you you know, you can track your whole body, you can track your hands, uh, and and stuff like that. So, like, it's so basically anything can be an accessory in in, in that sense. But like in short term, uh, a controller. Um, we're hoping at some point to have good keyboard input. <laughs> um, but yeah, like trackers for your body is basically I think the next steps, and also trackers for the world. Okay, headsets like the Oculus Rift require expensive PC hardware for nice graphical quality. But that aside, can someone get into PC-based VR and XR for less than 200 uh, United States dollars? Is the North Star project going to be good for that end? And are there any other options on the horizon? Um. Three hundred dollars is hard. Oh, two hundred dollars is hard. Uh, eBay is probably your best friend if that's what you're looking for. So you can probably get Vinamar headsets and such used for that around there. Um, the North Star will hopefully be good for that. It, it's quite. It's still a bit expensive, and even if you just buy the parts and three D print other things, you know, it takes a lot of time and effort to do. So I don't think it will be. It's yeah. It's hard to get get under two hundred dollars, um, just because of the screens and uh, lenses and all of that stuff. Um, 
there are uh, and and you know you're starting to get in do you, into territories where you skip six stuff tracking and is that really a good quality <laughs> uh good quality experience uh for users then um which is yeah so but the north star is good because it can um it's will hopefully le lower the barrier entry but at, at least but it also allows us to actually be in the game so we can actually uh, using open source only open source methods uh, experiment with open AR uh, or uh, open XR or AR in general um, but yeah it, it's it's a bit expensive uh, and the hardware that is cheap is you know not the best and you also unfortunately need like a computer on top of that um, so yeah looking at like used Winamar headsets like the first generation while crappy they they still work and hopefully yet sometime next year we will actually have support for them in Monod as well not just three dot but actually six stuff um okay uh, the next one is display audio the only output or are there other actuators to target other senses like vibration or smell yeah um currently in the open xr api you only have display and vibration so you have like um, you know, vibrations in the controllers, um, but uh, there's definitely room to add more. Uh, like there's uh, there's not in OpenXR yet, but like tactile feedback, so you can have special gloves that you know you can feel the stuff that you're touching, uh, touching or getting. Uh, or feeling like you're actually holding something in your hand, like a gun or something. You're feeling the recoil. Uh, there, you know, there's a lot of research and development going on all around XR in general. Uh, but right now, in OpenXR, uh, vibrations, sound, and display is basically the only thing there. But you can extend OpenXR with extensions, so you can add support for more. Good. Okay, let's wait if someone else. Yeah, there, there's things like, like more questions. Yeah, then there's like feedback. I've seen people have vests uh, with various engine, uh, various vibrations and stuff like that, so you can feel like you're getting hit shot and stuff like that. So there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, to add more, add more reality uh, to it. Okay, we have. Well, someone was writing. <laughs> Let's see if we have another question before finish. Okay, it seems this is everything. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, have a pleasant evening. Yeah, have a nice evening.